chair, and the floor is yours. Good morning. The city of Boston, in progress. The city of Boston Board of Appeal hearing for June 6, 2023 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature this last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March 2025. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments and opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is individuals, those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Stembridge reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. Um, Mr. Stembridge. Good morning, Madam Chair, fellow board members, President. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning. Mr. Valencia. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning. Ms. Barbaraza. Good morning. I see you. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning. Ms. Wewell. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning. Mr. Langham. Good morning, Madam Chair, present. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Stembridge. Um, Yes, Madam Chair. Um, first, the first on the agenda is extensions at 9.30 a.m. First, we have case BOA 9040697, the address of 1102 to 1106R Blueville Avenue. This is the first request for an extension. Um, the decision expired on May 7, 2023. So we have the board to, um, to determine if, a, if an additional, if, if an extension will be granted. Is the applicant here? The applicant. Yes, I'm here. I'm present. Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, members of the board. Can you put your name and address in the record and uh, just uh, briefly walk us through the request for extension? E uh, yes. Um, so. 
I'm sorry, I just meant state your name out loud and your address, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so sorry. Hi, my name is Cleon Byron and the address that I'm asking about for extension is 1102 Blue Hill Avenue to 1106 Oak Blue Hill Avenue. Uh, we're asking for the extension uh, to continue our project for a cannabis retail location in that area. Um, unfortunately, uh, the process took a little bit longer, plus we were in the beginning of COVID also. So we're just asking to see if we can uh, get an extension from the board, please. And you're seeking a one-year extension? Yes. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to grant an extension to May 7th, 2024. May I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yeah. Mr. Langham? Yes. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. P appreciate it. Thank you. The next case is um, basically in the same category, this being case BOA 1155218 with the address of 22 Wordsworth Street. This is the first request for an extension. The decision expired on May 21st of this year. And if the applicant is present and will explain why that's not why an extension is necessary. Okay, it looks like the applicant is here. Um, Jessica, is he a, does he need to be raised to a panelist? Yeah, one second. Um, William, go ahead. All right, thank you. Can you state um, your, yep, go ahead. Yep, William Sheehy here for 22 Wordsworth Street, um, asking the board's permission for an extension for this uh, two unit uh, rehab project in East Boston. Can you elaborate? What, what's the reason for the extension request? Uh, just gathering the information. It's taken uh, much longer than anticipated. Uh, most of the information that is needed by ISD uh, is in my hands. I'm just waiting for essentially one document. Uh, and unfortunately, time ran out with, within a couple weeks. So just looking for roughly a three-month extension is all I really need. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Um, so I'll make a motion to grant the extension until September 6th, uh, 2023 for the three months. Okay. Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries, good luck. Next, we have two companion extension cases. First being case BOA 1143574, the address of 449 Cambridge. <laughs> and, of, and with that, case BOA 1143565, the address of 2 Emory Road. This is the first request for extension. The decision will expire on August 27th of this year. If granted, the new expiration date will be August 27th of 2024. Is the applicant present? Um, I am here, hi. G good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, for the record, my name is Adam Hundley from Goulston and Stores at 400 Atlantic Avenue. I am the attorney for the owner. The owner remains very committed to the project and is actively working on the project. For example, we finalized Article 80 documents early this year. 
in light of the time that it's taking to finalize the plans, the permitting, and uh, the financing arrangements for the project, we're respectfully requesting a one-year extension of the zoning relief for the two buildings. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I make a motion to grant an extension to August 27, 2024. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Sh Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Betabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have, um, as earlier, um, a case that, I, that the date has expired, this being case BOA 106 with the address being 318 to 320 East Street. This, this is the first request for an extension. The decision expired on January 29th of this year. If the applicant is present, would they explain the situation, please? Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Secretary, members of the board, Attorney Nick Sazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, 28 State Street in Boston, here on behalf of Jim O'Donohue from Broadway Land Company, who's the property owner and uh, developer, uh, requesting a one-year extension of the zoning relief granted on this project. The project was to construct a new third floor rear infill addition to an existing uh, multifamily residential building. Uh, as Mr. Secretary mentioned, this is the first requested zoning extension for this matter. Um, Mr. O'Donoghue was not aware of the expiration date in January. He was under the impression that the COVID-19 state of emergency uh, applied to his zoning relief as a project was heard and approved during the state of emergency, well, which was in effect till June 15, 2021, and this was approved in January uh, 29, 2021. So right during, you know, during the middle of the uh, of the state of emergency. So he thought that the project's two-year relief period didn't, in fact, begin until June 15, 2021, which means that its period wouldn't have ran until June 15, 2023. Uh, meaning he thought that the extension request was timely when he made it in. Um, he has all other permits and approvals in place. Um, the one thing he's working on is just final BPDA design review uh, stamped plans as required under the zoning decision provisos. So he's ready, willing, and able to perform on the, uh, on the approvals. And so we are asking for a, a one-year extension, I guess, from January 29, 2023, meaning we would ask for the extension until January 29, 2024. I'm happy to go into more detail if you'd like, Madam Chair, um, but that's the rationale behind the uh, request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, uh, you addressed my questions. Are there any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? I make a motion to grant an extension until January 29th, 2024. May I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Stumbridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much, um, everybody, for the, for the understanding and flexibility. We really appreciate it. Next case is, again, in a similar situation. This being... Uh, Go ahead, Norm. Okay. Um, this is case BOA 1066736, the address of 122 Church Avenue. This is the first request for an extension. The decision expired on April 23rd of this year. If the applicant is present, would they explain the situation, please? Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, Mr. Stembridge, for stepping on you. I thought you wanted me to jump in. Uh, Attorney Nick Sazula, uh, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, uh, 
Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is the same developer, uh, Jim O'Donoghue. Um, it's uh, right nearby at uh, one to two Church Avenue. Um, it's it's a very similar situation, both you know almost companion cases where um, this is just a, a conversion of an occupancy uh, from a two family uh, to a four family with a small addition in the back. And this expired April twenty third, twenty twenty one. So a little bit more recently. Uh, it's the same same spiel as I gave before. I don't know if I need to go through it, Madam Chair, but we'd ask for an extension until April 23rd, 2024. Uh, same issue, same developer, same thought process as the, the one right before this. Thank you. So, so it's the same issue. He's in BPDA design review? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, both. Yeah, they're both. They're, they're literally around the corner from each other. Um, similar situations. He's just trying to get to that final process. but. Um, he was under the understanding that it went until June 15, 2023, which is why uh, we were a little behind on the extension request. So, yes, yeah, same, literally the same thing, just different address. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Make a motion to grant the extension to April 23rd, 2024. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair sure, also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Next we, next we have case BOA 116 Reef 856 with the address of 1175 Dorchester Avenue. This is the first request for extension, for an extension. The decision will expire on July 9th of this year. If granted, the new expiration date will be July 9th, 2024. Is the applicant present? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Attorney Nick Cizula again, McDermott Quilty Miller, 28 State Street, Suite 802 in Boston here on behalf of Dorchester uh, 1175 LLC uh, as the owner of the property. Uh, this is different than the first two, thankfully. Uh, this is <laughs> requesting a one-year extension until July 9th, 2024. Uh, as Mr. Secretary ran into the record, it is the first zoning extension. Um, there are just a few remaining post-approval actions that need to be handled with other city agencies in order for the project to obtain a building permit with ISD. Um, my understanding is the construction drawings are pretty much finalized along with plans, uh, the MEP plans for mechanical, uh, electrical, plumbing, and engineering. So we're close on this one as well, but we do need a little bit more time. Um, so we're asking for a one-year extension. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Here, none may have a motion. I make a motion to grant an extension till July 9th, 2024. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Benabrazo? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. We'll see you Thank later. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm done for the day. You don't have to oh, deal with me. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> have a good one. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And for the last extension, um, this this will be a different from the rest. This being case BOA 115565 with the address being 79 Portland Street. The note here indicates that the applicant no longer needs this extension, that the permit was issued, and to please withdraw this request. Okay, then. <laughs> so I guess that is what we will do. Is the applicant here to state that though? Hi, Susan, are you on? So can you raise your hand? I don't see the name in the um, attendee section. Okay, well, it doesn't sound like they need any action from us. So how we are, do we need to take any vote? 
Uh, I am not sure if they filed that in writing or not, but to be okay. safe, I would, I would make it so whether to approve or to deny the withdrawal. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, may I have a motion to either withdraw, uh, approve, or not approve the withdrawal request? Make a motion to approve the withdrawal request. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bedabraza. Yes. Ms. Wulo. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Thank you. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, we'll move on to the board final operative cases scheduled for 930. First, we have case DOA 886016, with the address being 882 South Street. All the applicants present to explain the situation. Yeah, please uh, see a hand raise one second. Uh, Mitch, go ahead. I just sent a request to unmute you. Yep. Hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for having the hearing. Um, we're basically trying to, this, this uh, had a contingency of, of uh, no Sundays um, on this application. And we were hoping that could be reviewed. We are, we're in the process of building right now still the, uh, we're finally making some good headway on the space. Uh, when this was issued, there was, uh, you know, not that much experience with cannabis um, uh, facilities being open. And now I feel like we've, we've seen a lot of experience. We have a lot more open. And um, as far as I know, this would be the only location that wouldn't be allowed to be open Sundays. Uh, this spot is, uh, you know, Sundays uh, represent probably like the fourth, fourth busiest day of the week. So it can be um, kind of a financial hardship there. And I was just wondering if that decision could be revisited or if, uh, I, I think the, the application said it would be revisited in one year uh, after we open or if we could somehow expedite that or, or, or eliminate it, that would, be, that would be amazing. So can you take a step back? Are, are you open? How long have you been open? And you know, has no. there been any issues? No, we have not been open. We're not open. We are in the process of building. We, uh, right now, we, we anticipate uh, being done with construction in, in July uh, and hope to get our certificate of occupancy there. Uh, there. There still will be another probably four, four to five month process with the state after that. So we hope to be open by the end of the year. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sort of basing this on on the fact that you know, I, I believe this is the only location in Boston that wouldn't be allowed to be open Sundays, um, and I'm, uh, you know, we we're just hoping that uh, the board might be able to take a look at that and see. I, I don't know if we've if we've seen a lot of you know problems with places being open on Sundays. Oh, I, I think you haven't opened yet, and I, I, none of us were present when this was approved, so uh, we don't have the benefit of. The community's feedback around that. Uh, Madam you know, Chair, I, Madam Chair, I reviewed the okay. the drawings, and I actually was present for that. Oh, okay. Can um, you can I hear it? But the question, I'm not sure if you're opening up for questions from the board member yet. I was happy to, happy to do so. I, the only question I have is, um, what were you looking for in terms of hours of operation on Sunday? On Sundays, we would probably do uh, like a 12 to 8. Or I mean, I'm, I'm happy to work with whatever the board sees fit. But we would we would be closing a little bit earlier, either 12 to 7 or 12 to 8. Okay. All right. Um, no further questions. Uh, could I ask a question of you, Ms. Barraza, since you were sure. present for this? Uh, I mean, I guess my question would be uh, whether you know what the community feedback was around that, since it uh, looks like it, it abuts. Uh, you know, uh, the park and obviously it's, you know, residential surrounding it. So I don't know if there was Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm that. looking that the date of the hearing was dated back in January of 2021. Um, uh, if the applicant stating that it would be the only operation that was, that is not open on Sundays, I can see why they're appearing in front of us today. There is a park nearby, so maybe there were some concerns 
um, with uh, family activities across the site, um, but I don't find a request being out of the ordinary. It, Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Not, like, at that time, I, we didn't have feedback from the community that was against it. That was strictly something just sort of brought up by the board um, at the time. And um, so that's, that's sort of why we're here trying to revisit it as well. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Javier, does this require um, opening up to public testimony, or is this? Um... Uh, if, if you do not need it, um, you don't have to, but that's up to the chair. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily, but if you think it requires it, you can request for open testimony. Uh, no, I think that's fine. Um, uh, if there are no other questions from the board, uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I put for a motion to remove the proviso of the Sunday operation and to um, have the hours of operation from 12 to 7. May I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? No. The chair also votes no, but the motion carries. Next case. Thank you. Next case is BOA 1320835, with the address being 9 Hewen Street. Is the applicant or the representative present? Yes, uh, Mr. Stembridge, good morning. Attorney Joseph Feaster. Um, should I proceed, Madam Chair? Uh, yes, sir, please do. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, Mr. Stembridge, Mr. Secretary, members of the board, Joseph Feaster, from the law firm of Dane Torpy, 175 Federal Street, Suite 1500 in Boston. Uh, this may be considered by the board as an unusual request, but I, I think not, and I think it's important to bring this issue before the board seeking almost similar to the previous applicant for the uh, board final arbiter, the removal of a proviso. In our case, it's a proviso that is no living space in the basement. And the reason why I, I'll go through a history of this and David Freed, the architect is on if the board requires not a sheer additional design type information. That's not my value wick, so I will leave it to uh, architect Freed. But the reason why I'm bringing this uh, request before the board once again is that it seems to be in conflict with the desires of the neighborhood, uh, some of the city of Boston's housing authority uh, policy, such as the additional dwelling unit issues uh, policy that the city has put into effect, and some neighboring decisions with regards to this, beside the impact that it has on my client, the developer's desire to increase the housing product here in the city of Boston. So let me walk the board through a little bit of the history. Um, this uh, project has had community support from the outset. The original submission was sometime back in 2021, and that was at that time uh, the project was designed with basement, uh, uh, with bedrooms in the basement. The board rejected that uh, proposal, and um, and so the developer came back. My client came back with another design, which removed the basement uh, uh, bedrooms, and just sought to have moved it up to the first floor, and then sought to just have living space in the um, in the lower level. Now that's consistent with many buildings in the city of Boston, many buildings which are, uh, are being developed and designed and supported by this board in the immediate area. And with my submission for the board final arbiter, I referred to buildings at 109 Ellington Street uh, and at 10 Walcott Street. Now I know that having served on the board, I know our position on the board is that is not any decision is not precedential to the one that's before you, but I would like the board to take that into account. Um, 
as I pointed out, this has been supported by the neighborhood uh, throughout the entire process. There are letters from the community organizations that exist there. And quite frankly, this proposal, if that language is, remains, uh, not only does it deny the, uh, my client of being able to provide to these homeowners uh, the ability to use their living space in the lower level, but as well almost makes the unit uh, uh, non-marketable. So um, that's the basis for my request that the board uh, would eliminate this proviso of no living space in the basement. Uh, looking at trying to do bedrooms, that was denied in the first case. That is not what we're proposing here. Uh, if there are specific questions on the design issues, Madam Chair, I would ask for you uh, to allow uh, David Breed to respond to it. Sure, thank you. Any, any questions from the board? I, I, um, I had an opportunity to review the documents. Mm -hmm. And um, so right now it is a 3F 5000 and currently you have a, um, a three unit, correct? And you like to make it a four unit with if the basement is habitable. Can you, can you clarify that? Uh, uh, can I have uh, Ms. Uh, Barraza, can I have Mr. Freed uh, respond to that? Yes, if he's available. He is. He just needs to be unmuted. He's, uh, he's on as a panelist. Um, yes, this is David Freed. Uh, I'm an architect at Chewing Company. Um, the original design was um, four units, um, uh, all of which are duplexed units. And um, at the uh, at the approval from the board uh, of the project, they uh, they eliminated the living space in the basement. So we ended up with two duplex units and two um, small floor through units on the first floor with just uh, empty living space in the basement. So how were, many units total at that point? Uh, still four units. Four units. So, um, so right now it's a three F 5,000, but you're getting four units out of it without the basement? Yes. Okay, so you are maximizing the use of the land. It's not that it's a hardship because we eliminated the basement originally. They just end up being very, um, uh, very small units. Okay, so then the other question is, um, the basement as you propose does meet the 45, inch max height, correct? Yes. Still, okay. So the, the only thing that I see that's a problem is with the multifamily, you need a seven foot six ceiling height. You only have seven foot four. Oh, seven says on the plans? That's what, the only drawing that was legible from your submission, what's the basement unit? And okay. it said seven foot four. Oh, um, I, I don't recall that. Our, our drawings say eight feet. Okay. And we've always, That's what we have. Mm -hmm. We always um, we we calculate if you count the number of risers, it's based on an eight foot uh, uh, ceiling height. Okay, and then um, it has two means of egress, right? One going to the top unit and one to the back. Yes, one has a direct egress outside. And then the other one is um, going to the first floor unit, correct? And internal stairs. They both actually have uh, egress directly outside. Uh, from the from the uh, garden level as well as uh, egress up to the first floor. So I'd say there's egresses. Ms. Barrera, if I might interject, this is Attorney Feaster. Seemingly, uh, maybe we need to submit updated plans because it sounds like what you may be looking at is not consistent with what we uh, have submitted and what's being considered. Um, so it sounds like that might be the confusion. Okay. And I think Jeff Hampton's hands are up. Great, thank oh, you. No further oh, questions. Yes. Hi, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chairman, Mr. Board. Just to put a little context, the, the, why the board at the time was hesitant about the basement space was because it's new construction. It wasn't expanding into the bottom, into an already existing basement. I think they had a problem with it being new construction and having a living space in the basement. That was their concern. I'm not here to make a recommendation one way or the other. You know, going through the notes of the hearing, 
that uh, because it was new construction, I think that's why they were really uh, against the living space in the basement. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Yes, if uh, the proponent can say again how are they going to use this basement? Is this going to be part of what apartment or what unit? Or is this going to be their own unit? Just to clarify that one more time. Yes, the, um, so the basement will be used as the, um, the kitchen, living, dining area, and the, uh, the, the bedrooms have been moved up to the first floor. Okay, so this is going to help one of the apartments. This is going to increase the livable space for one of the units only. For two, two units. So, Madam Chair, I don't have those drawings that show kitchen on the okay. ground floor. Um, and then I would like to hear from Jeff, um, what's his, what's the BPDA's opinion on having a uh, kitchen, living space in a basement, and then putting bedrooms at the top? Well, the, the last uh, iteration of the board was always getting to having bedrooms in the basement. Um, I don't know if we as a community just have uh, feeling one way or the other where they are. Um, but uh, I have a question for the attorney fees that are in. I don't know, but I just wanted to make sure when you're adding this word to pass, I assume you already received zoning relief or FAR, correct? Yeah. Because this would add square footage and it would oh, increase your. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the whatever. Uh, just an answer to that particular question. Yes, we have received the zoning relief for FAR, and I just want to respond to Ms. Hampton to what you had indicated was the sentiment of the board at the previous hearing. Yes, there was the distinction made between existing properties for using a living space versus new development, which this is. Um, it was also suggested about, well, uh, eliminating the living space in the basement and increasing the height which was something which was not discussed in the with the neighborhood and would increase would also further another violation so yes so to answer your question specifically yes far was uh, was allowed uh, and permitted by the board in this previous vote and, and at the end you're 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 just accommodating four units yes Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion with uh, two proviso. One, that the drawings be submitted to the board, um, the correct drawings, and that uh, that it's approved without a building code relief. Okay. Uh, may I have a second? Uh, Madam Chair. Second. Yeah, Madam Chair. Sorry. Sorry, this is Javier. I just want to clarify was that an approval for what those two provide? So, um, so, motion of approval with the condition that drawings be submitted to the board okay. and that there would be no building code relief. Thank you. Okay. I had a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Vettabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much, members of the board. Thank you. The last board, board final office case is case BOA 139-9265 with the address being 60R Alvin Alvin Street. The applicant or the representative present. Morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Carmen Barsomi and Dietrich. I'm a resident at 60 Alvin Street presenting uh, for 60R Alvin. We're asking for your approval on four amendments to our original construction plan at 60R Alban, which the BPDA has previously approved and stamped. The changes are as following. First, 
In order to support our aging family, my parents and grandparents, we have amended the plans from a two car garage to a one car garage in order to provide a bedroom and a full bathroom on the first floor. We had originally planned only to use the one garage bay for parking and the other for storage, as we do have ample space in our driveway for our vehicles, so the change will not be any you know, parking in, in position. Uh, second, we have amended the plans uh, to include the full bathroom on the first floor. We have thus reduced from a two and a half bath to two full baths with one on each floor. Third, while there's an apparent increase in living space compared to our previous proposal by taking over the one garage bay, the overall living space has actually decreased according to the initial sketches as they did not account for the wall thickness of the ICF that we are using. Uh, it's a total of about 12 inches thick once you take into account the 11 inch block and the sheathing. Uh, recalculating to account for the thicker ICF walls, we find that we have a lower square footage um, than the original 1,396 that we had submitted. We now have 1,367 square feet of living space. And fourth, we have also considered uh, the size and the living space and it decided to adjust the roof line from an A-frame to a modified hip dormer on the east and west side specifically, so that there will be more headroom in the offices and uh, laundry space upstairs respectively. Please note that the inspection engineer, Vernon Lee at Inspectional Services has confirmed and there are no additional violations. The dimensions and basic design, including footprint, setbacks, and roof heights, remain the same as our initial drawings. And we also have our architect, uh, Neil Pyatt, on the line if there are any technical questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yeah, uh, yes. Um, yes, ma'am. And it was a question that um, I was trying to get clarification from in terms of the applicant. Can you just state what was the previous square footage of living space using the same method um, that you're using in the proposal with the ICF? I just want to have a comparison. Certainly. Uh, we actually have our architect, Neil Pyatt, uh, on the line, able to address that question specifically, if that's all right. Of course. Uh, uh, hello, board. Uh, my name is Neil Pyatt. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, so uh, the previous construction uh, at the ground floor only was assuming uh, two by six framed walls. Yeah, can I just get a square footage? Gross, gross square footage of sure. before, after using the same dimension standards measurement guidelines. Okay, you're looking for gross square footage, not net square yes. footage. Okay. Um, there, uh, there hasn't been a change to the uh, footprint, so the gross square footage is uh, technically the same. And that number is? What's the living space? Because you removed the garage. Uh, the, so what's the delta from the old and new? The delta from old and new is 244. Okay, 244. So you're increasing the living space by 244. Yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? A second. Ms. Barraza, if I could, could we ask for the design review as an ash control? And that's an NDOD. Yes, to include the BPDA design review, I just removed, I had removed it because the applicant said that they already had undergone BPDA design review and that's why they were coming in front of us. Yeah, but I think we have they gotten the review for the proof? That's the only question. Yeah, I'm not sure, but we could just add that in the emotion. So if yeah. we can restate right. the motion. Thank you. All right, would you like to restate your motion? Sure, uh, motion of approval with BT, BPDA design review. Second, may I have a second? Second. Mr. Stambridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? 
Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck to you. Thank you. Can you, uh, apologies, can you just uh, clarify what you meant with the BPA design review? It just means it needs to go back to them before final. Yeah, if we haven't stamped the change in the group line because it's in a neighborhood design yeah. overlay district and in Ashmont Hill, we're going to have to take a look at it again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next. Okay. Um, next week, we have one groundwater conservation overlay district case, that being case VOA. 146B070 with the address of 577 Massachusetts Avenue is the applicant for the representative present. Hi, Lewis should be on. Lewis, go ahead. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is a uh, conversion uh, from a lodging house to a four dwelling unit. Uh, the only violation we have is the uh, G code, Article 32. Uh, we have obtained approval uh, from Boston Water and Sewer. We have a letter of no harm uh, from BGT and Associates Engineers. And then uh, we have also a letter of compliance issued by the Boston Water and Sewer. The Boston Groundwater Trust also has been involved and is, uh, it has been approved as well. Mr. Simonelli on to confirm. Yes, Madam Chair. Good morning. Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust. And we have both letters from the applicant. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I, I would like to put forward a motion for approval with provisos that plans should be submitted to the Boston Landmarks Commission for design review for any exterior changes. Okay, may I have a second? Okay. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Okay, Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Before we go into the hearings uh, scheduled for 9.30 a.m., we'll ask if there are any requests for withdrawals or deferrals from this time period. I do have a raised hand here. One second, just want to make sure. Michelle, are you looking for a deferral here? And Andrea? Okay, probably not. Um, I have no other. I think Andrea has a question for something else, but. Okay. All right, let's proceed then. Moving on to the hearing scheduled for 9.30 a.m. The first is case VOA 144. 7018, the address of 43 Fremont Street. Is the applicant for the representative present? Yes, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with Adams and Marancy, business address of 168 8th Street, South Boston, first floor. Uh, with me today is the applicant, Nick Beijing from Alpha Properties, as well as James Christopher from 686 Architects. This proposal seeks to subdivide the existing 55,584 square foot lot at 120 Basson Street, creating two lots. If I can direct your attention to page two and three of the drawings. Lot A, located on 120 Babson Street, will consist of approximately 43,704 square feet, and lot B will be 43 through 47 Fremont Street, that will consist of 12,000 150 square feet, which will include the erection of the proposal of 10 new residential dwelling units with nine off street parking spaces. Uh, the building will be all electric, compliant to the stretch code, and fully sprinkled. It will also be equipped with an elevator for accessibility. 
Two of those units will be offered as affordable units to comply with the Mayor's Affordable Housing Initiative of 20% affordability. All units will be owner occupied. The proposal is located within a 2F 6,000 subdistrict. The building footprint is around 6,200 square feet, which is approximately 50% lot coverage and will comply with some of the rules and regulations surrounding the Plan Mattapan Initiative. The units will range from approximately 455 square feet to 1,126 square feet. If I can now direct your attention to page five of the drawings. On the left-hand side of the first floor, there will be a main lobby entrance, mill room, utility room, as well as a bike storage room. Also on the first floor will consist of a one bedroom and a two bedroom with small patios recessed into the footprint of the building. But those units will be located again on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side of the first floor will be the parking garage area for nine parking spaces. Four of those spaces are full-size spaces and five will be compact spaces. There will also be a storage room for indoor trash facility. Uh, second floor will consist of one studio, one bedroom, and four two-bedroom units. Each unit will have balconies set within the building as well. Third floor will be set back from the front and rear, which will consist of two one-bedrooms. Both units will have a small walkout deck area. The applicant is here seeking relief for use as multifamily use is forbidden. Off-street parking, uh, one space per unit is required by code, and we are only proposing nine spaces. Uh, we have a violation for the floor area ratio. 0.8 is what is required. Uh, we are actually seeking a 0.95, and uh, just to bring to your attention, uh, within news, uh, there was an administrative error in the drawings stating 9.5, and again, we are seeking uh, 0.95. Uh, building height is excessive in both height and stories. Proposal calls for 37 feet and three stories, and what is compliant is 35 feet and two and a half stories. And lastly, we have a violation for open space. We're required to provide 8,000 square feet, and the proposal provides 5,873 square feet. At this time, I'm going to pause for any questions uh, from the board. Thank you. Ms. Bebraza, have you reviewed the plans? Madam Chair, I've reviewed the plans. I don't have any questions. Any questions from the board? I have one question. Yes, sir. How many, how many units are going to be low-income units? Two. We're, so what's required from us for the IDP percentage is 13%, but we took the initiative to comply with the mayor's initiative of 20% affordability. And it's only two units? Yes, correct. Okay. And for what income levels are those two units? Yeah, so um, with with this being ownership, so the income levels for the AMIs are approximately anywhere from 80 to 100% AMI. Any other questions from the board? We'll open it up to public testimony. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Eric James from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant for 43 Fremont Street completing a butters meeting on April 18th, 2023. Can you guys hear me? Everything good? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Oh, all right. So completed the butters meeting on April 18th, 2023. They also met with the Greater Mattapan Neighborhood Council who chose to recommend the following provisos. Uh, they stated that they want to reduce the number of units from 10 to six to address the density issues and to preserve the open space. So as of now, our office has received no letters of support or opposition to this project, and we are looking to defer our judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Madam Chair, if I could just, just respond to Mr. James's comments, um, which in fact, I'm sure Mr. Secretary can attest to this, there were approximately 40 letters of support from immediate director butters and neighbors that were submitted as well. Um, those were also given um, to the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services as well as the Greater Pan Mattapan Neighborhood Council. Do you have those, Mr. Stembridge? Yes, we do, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with provisos that one, the plan undergoes BPDA design review, paying special attention to the character of the neighborhood on the exterior, 
and two, that it has an agreement be um, issued by MOH prior to issuing permit. May I have a second? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to make sure that there's two IDP units <laughs> um, with the MOH agreement. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have case DOA 1407963 with the address of 50 Belnell Road. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Yes, yes. Hello? Yes. 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 Oh, and, uh, this is Jose Guzman. I'm the architect of record for 50 Benel Road project. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Should I make a presentation or should I wait for you? Uh, can you walk us through the your proposal and violations, please? Sure. Um, this is a, uh, a conversion of a one family to a two family. So we're adding uh, an addition to the to the to the existing house that is located on on a corner lot and it has the uh, full basement with uh, bedrooms at the lower basement and uh, living space on the first floor bedrooms at the second level and a master bedroom at the attic level and uh, we, we're asking for uh, uh, relief for for uh, one uh, converting it from a one family to a two family. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the plans? Um, Madam Chair, I I would like to hear Jeff Hampton's BPA recommendations because I didn't see any or at least yeah, or at least BT or at least BTD as well as recommendation mm -hmm. on the front yard parking. Yep. Yeah, my, my apologies, Ms. Better Barraza on this. Uh, I don't know why it didn't make it over to you. Uh, we recommended approval with uh, proviso that we increase the rear and side yard setbacks uh, as well as consolidating the parking spaces and to so that reduces the uh, the impervious pavement and uh, maneuverability. Okay. Jeff, is that with the assumption that through the BPDA design review, you would eliminate the front yard parking? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. great, thank you. Thank you, sorry about that. that. Yep. Thank you for that question. Uh, any other questions from the board? Thank you, Chair, well, if you have a comment from uh, Bob D'Amico. Oh, yes, please. Uh, he writes to Elnell Road. Too many spaces in the front yard. Request denied. Is what he wrote. Okay, I think that uh, that uh, is addressed by Mr. Hampton's uh, recommendation. Uh, any other questions from the board? <clears throat> May we open it up to public testimony? Good morning, Madam Chair, and members of the board. This is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant completed the community process and presented their proposed development for 50 Belknell Road to the Belknell Family Neighborhood Association and neighbors in the area and in a butters meeting that I hosted on February 15th. They also met with the Belknell Family Neighborhood Association at another community meeting. And during both processes, they answered um, questions from neighbors and the direct abutters. Um, the Belknell Neighborhood Association hasn't received any opposition to this proposal. Um, from the community that they cover, and they only request that the, uh, the redevelopment project takes place during permitted times between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m., and that all the contracting equipment and materials are stored and parked legally within the construction site. Um, we have received no opposition or additional letters of support for this project, and at this time, we wish to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Thank you. Uh, just to, for the applicant, can you confirm uh, 
that you can comply with those requests from the neighborhood association, the 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and the construction uh, equipment within your property? Yeah, yes, yes, we, we yes. will comply. Thank you. Um, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with provisals. One is to um, have a site plan review with BPDA uh, to determine the location of the addition to increase rear yard and side yard setback and to consolidate the parking so that there be no front yard parking to the property. Okay. Uh, may I have a second? <clears throat> second. Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, board members, for your time. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Next, we have two companion cases. B, the first is BOA 1417475, with the address being 8 Knight Street. And the second and the companion case is that case BOA 1417476, with the address being 10, 10 Knight Street. It's the applicant and or the representative present. Uh, yes, he is. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Mike Ross, the law firm of Prince Low Bell. I'm here with my uh, client, Melissa Rosales, who is uh, an owner occupant of this existing two family uh, building at 8 Knight Street, where she lives with her family. And I'm also here with Benjamin Lee, the architect uh, for the proposal. Uh, what we're trying to do here today is uh, add a uh, three-family uh, structure onto the existing oversized lot that you see here in front of you, which is 17,322 square feet, uh, without having to demolish this um, 19, uh, early 1900s uh, two-family structure. Uh, so, you know, as you, as you know, this is a um, 2F5000, so each lot uh, could work uh, with a 5,000 square foot lot. Uh, you could do here three 5,000s within that 17,000 to get six units. Uh, what we're proposing is to add to the existing two units um, a three family. So you would, we would have a total of five units. If you go to the next slide, I can show you what the um, division of the lot looks like. So keeping the existing structure where it is, 8 Knight Street, we would just be um, demolishing that rear deck there. Uh, we would be able to fit a uh, new three-family structure called 10 Knight Street off there on the, on the right side of the lot, also using the existing curb cuts uh, that are on both Reedville and on Knight Street. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. And here, this is a good way of showing you kind of the parking layout. Uh, so there would be a total of five parking, uh, five units, like I mentioned. Zoning requires uh, two uh, units per, sorry, two parking spaces per unit, so that would be 10. We do show 10 parking spaces here, eight uh, off the rear of the property there, uh, and then two in the front yard. Uh, we kept the two in the front yard of Knight Street there because that is an existing uh, curb cut with a a nice stone wall that I'll show you in a moment, um, you know, recognizing that that does throw off a violation. And I'll get into the violations in a moment. Um, and because those two spaces are tandem, uh, it doesn't give us the, the 10 by zoning. So we were cited by, uh, uh, for, for just only having nine instead of 10 parking spaces. And I'll get into the violations in a moment. I just want to quickly walk you through the, the house. Mr. Ross, where, where are the curb cuts to get to the, the eight back parking spots? Yeah, so that would be off New, new or existing? Existing. Okay. Yeah, that would be off Reedville Street. That's an existing curb cut. Uh, next slide, please. So here's just the floor plans. You know, the left is the basement. 
uh, basement is not allowed in a uh, in, in this uh, zoning district. And then on the right is the um, first floor. And what you have is a three bedroom, one bath, 1200 square foot unit. And that would be unit number one. And if you go to the next slide on the second and third floor, uh, the second floor, you also have a three bedroom, one bath, 1200 square foot unit on the second floor. And then on the third floor, it's a bit smaller because you know, the building uh, tapers and dormers at the top. Uh, and so that's also a three bedroom, one bath, but it has a, uh, it's only 1,075 square feet. If you go to the next slide, I'll just show you the elevations quickly. So, you know, as you can see, kind of typical architecture of the area with a front protruding bay. Um, the uh, first, the second and third units both have a front and rear small porch area. And then you kind of have the dormer top, as mentioned. Uh, next slide, please. This is just an existing uh, condition photo. Just to give you a sense of that stone wall, this is along Knight Street, where 8 Knight Street currently faces. And then to the right of 8 Knight Street is that existing curb cut uh, that I mentioned off of Knight Street. And that's where we would be proposing the three family um, structure would go right there. Uh, I, I think if you just want to pivot back to, to the um, second slide, I can walk you through the zoning relief we're seeking. And the second slide, this is a good slide to do it on. Uh, I did want to mention that um, no trees will come down as a result of this. There will be uh, 25 plantings uh, around the immediate area after the construction is completed. In terms of the zoning relief, 8 Knight Street, uh, because we are adjusting, a, a, creating a new property line between 8 and 9, I mean 8 and 10, uh, there will be a side yard uh, insufficient violation created. So instead of the 10 foot that's required, uh, there would be around five feet at the side yard. Um, they cited us for rear yard insufficient, which the rear yard is required at 40. We have an existing 28.1 foot rear yard today. We're not, we're not adding a square foot to the rear yard, so I'm not sure they necessarily have to cite us on that, but they did, so that's in relationship to 10, I mean 8 Ninth Street. In relationship to 10, which is the proposed three family we're talking about, uh, there were several violations. I'll quickly walk through them. Uh, the parking in the front, because it's within five feet of the front, we recited Article 10, Section 1. Uh, we were also cited for parking, as I mentioned earlier, uh, nine instead of 10 parking spaces. We were cited for building alignment conformity. Um, we were cited for allowing parking to go through another lot um, to get to uh, uh, for the three family. So accessory parking is not allowed to traverse through um, 8 Knight Street, and that's where we were cited for that. Um, we were cited for parking in the front of the lot, which I mentioned earlier, on Knight Street. Um, and um, the use, it, this is a three family, uh, and uh, it's in a 2F district. The, um, they cite us for a lot um, insufficient. However, uh, we have a lot here of 6267 and a 2F 5000, so I'm not sure we needed to be cited on that one. Uh, they did cite us for floor area excessive. The FAR for this area in a 2F 5000 is 0 0.5, and we're at a 0 0.73. I'll point out that the 8 Knight Street FAR is around a quarter, 0.25 thereabouts. So if you averaged it out, we would actually be right there. But of course, that's, that's not the case. We're dividing the lot. So we're at a 0.73, as I mentioned. Uh, the building height in this area uh, is two and a half stories. And we're at probably two and three quarter stories. We exceed the half story. Um, and so we were cited for that. Usable open space on the uh, 10th Street lot um, requires seven, 1750 uh, per unit. We're at 1300 per unit. And then finally, um, also likewise, the side yard, uh, we're at a 6.28 and a 13 when 10 is required on both sides. Uh, I'll pause there, Madam Chair, and see if there are any questions. Uh, Mr. Hampton, um, did you have a recommendation 
Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And Mr. Board, again, uh, I suggest getting the report to you. Um, it's essentially the same recommendation as the last one. Uh, eliminating front yard parking um, and uh, increasing the unit space, but we are on the record uh, in support of it with design review for the elimination of the uh, front yard parking. Okay. And Mr. Stembridge, did uh, Mr. D'Amico also weigh in on that? Um, basically saying, excuse me. Uh, oh, you're here? Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, um, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTV. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to see two, the two spaces in the front yard uh, be removed. Um, the two spaces be removed, I don't know where that comes from. But uh, historic uh, purposes, we always go with the most 1.5 spaces per unit. That was our maximum. Uh, and secondly, if I could look at the slide, uh, is the garage going to be demolished? Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. D'Amico, the existing garage will be demolished. OK, um, uh, that's about it. Uh, I, I just recommend that two front yard parking spaces be removed uh, because it was set a dangerous precedent. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the board? Um, Madam Chair, this is just an observation. I find that there is an extraordinary amount of impervious surface. Um, and I would almost recommend that the applicant really removes that impervious surface and gives it back to open green space. Can you just clarify how wide is that curb cut on Breedeville? I might ask you to go to um, Madam Ambassador, the first slide, and I'm hoping we, we put a measurement. Well, we don't have a measurement there. It, it does look- it, it feels like it's 25 feet, 30 yeah, feet. It looks, we yeah. um, we're going with existing what's there, but we certainly can, um, you know, reduce it to a ten foot driveway if that's uh, correct. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Other questions from the board? Hearing none, we have public testimony. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. The applicants did complete the community process and I hosted an abutters meeting for this proposal on December 14th. They also met with the High Park Neighborhood Association and the applicant herself back in July connected with that neighborhood group before they started their community process. And then again, after the abutters meeting uh, with that group in January. So the High Park Neighborhood Association wanted an updated refusal letter for the proposal and the violations uh, for insufficient lot size and ins insufficient open space to be added uh, to the revised letter. And once they received that new refusal letter, they rediscussed the project on their agenda in May. And after completing their review, the High Park Neighborhood uh, Association has decided to submit testimony in non-opposition, which has been sent to the board. Um, and they are just hoping that the new structure will be built um, as attractive as um, the structure for 8 Night Street currently is. And um, at this time, we've re received no additional letters of support or opposition. So we do wish to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jordan Frias here from Councilor Ricardo Royal's office. Let's go on record in support of this. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion with BTDA, BTDA I'm sorry, Boston Transportation Department review to ensure that parking is no more than 1.5 parking spaces per unit and BPDA, BPDA design review. So to confirm a motion to approve with those two provisos. Correct. Approved. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Um, is there something? Okay. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.
Next, we have two, uh, two more companion cases. First being case BOA 1444614, the address of 87 Parkland Road. And along with that, we have case BOA 1444618, the address being 91 Parkland Road. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Mark Okrent. I'm a, an owner and managing partner um, of EK Sanford Builders, as well as the owner of other properties. So uh, today's proposal, uh, and, and I apologize, I, I have a different presentation I can provide, but this is the proposed plan would be to increase the um, driveway space and parking from currently uh, already existing two spaces that exist in a, in a standard driveway uh, to expand the driveway to the rear of the of both buildings and increase to a total of four parking spaces. Uh, both buildings, 87 and 91 respectively, um, both have fully approved long form permits for full demo, uh, um, I'm sorry, full gut construction, which is nearing completion currently. Um, we've also had uh, several community hearings and received support from the community as there's uh, significantly limited parking on Parkton Road in Jamaica Plain. Uh, we do plan on relocating the curb cut to be centered on the driveway between the two uh, buildings. Currently, there is an existing curb cut, but it's offset. Um, that submission is in its final stage of approval, waiting for the last signature, which we expect to have by the end of this month. Uh, be open to any questions and appreciate today's session. Yeah. So to confirm, your it's an easement between the two properties so that they can both access their two parking spots. New Correct. Parking. There's there's an easement between both properties, and I apologize I didn't mention we also have fully approved plans from BWSC for both properties for uh, the water infill and mitigate, mitigation, um, as well as submitted plans and approved permits to be able to do all the direct connections to the drainage lines in the street um, and deal with any runoff. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, I have a question for the yes. applicant. Um, why is there additional paving beyond the parking spaces? So like between the property line and the parking? Uh, just to clarify, Ms. Weevil, there are you described on the, the left and right side, or really just the left side behind building 87 for both Yeah, houses. so 87, it's along that I guess when you're facing the property, the right property line, and then for 91, it's between the parking space and the rear lot line. Uh, those are both added just for uh, mobility in the space behind the buildings. Um, the, there is adequate space for two cars per side. However, with especially with the um, utility pole that's in the middle, trying to make sure that the cars can navigate around the corner of both buildings safely was a, a concern. Um, so we made sure that we asphalted the space both for that perspective and from a maintenance perspective trying to make sure that for the um, future owners it was you know more straightforward for them to manage through the winter time period okay thank you any other questions from the board i, I would like to hear um bob demikil's recommendation on the aisle and parking layout uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Bob D'Amico, BCD. Um, the uh, driveway is 10 foot wide, assuming that they get permission to use uh, the, the property on the other uh, side of the um, current uh, building. Um, that's okay. And I have to say I agree with the applicant uh, only because uh, in order for these automobiles to get in and out, they're going to need that space, um, which is unfortunate, but for that to work, they need the paved area that is reflected uh, in these plans. And as far as the tandem parking is concerned, um, if it's public, that's a problem. But since it's private, um, we tend to go along with that because uh, obviously uh, the people that are living there have to work out how that works. But from a maneuverability standpoint, I understand that there's one car that might be difficult. But again, since it's uh, um, residential, we can go along with that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Dmitko. Any other questions from the board? Uh, Maybe we, oh, oh, go ahead, Katie. I'm sorry. Were you also, uh, I'll defer to you, Ms. Barraza. I was just gonna say like, um, uh, why is this needed now and how do you usually park your cars for the two properties? So uh, just to clarify and, and apologies, there, there was, I guess, additional sheets in this presentation to show the existing. The existing has uh, two tandem spaces directly abutting the street coming in towards the center of the two properties and then it stops. So there is, there was historically two, pay, two parking spaces in that location. Um, as we've taken ownership of the buildings and, and um, uh, in the process of uh, updating their, their renovation, trying to increase parking off street on Parkton because there, there is not available on street parking to be able to uh, place any of the tenants. Um, we're, we have not increased the number of bedrooms, number of units or, or anything about the volume of dwelling. However, in today's world, it seems not uncommon that six units would have at least six cars. And with the two spaces that were there, we felt it reasonable to try and uh, add additional parking to at least accommodate um, some additional tenants as well as try and depopulate some of the street parking. Okay, I, I, we didn't have the, the additional pages, we only had the site plan. So thank you for that clarification. Did you still have a question, Ms. Will? Yeah, um, Mr. Ogren, would your client be amenable to pervious um, materials instead of asphalt? Uh, so we had researched that and uh, the feedback from several different installers was that the maintenance concern, especially with the, the winters and the slope of the property, um, is that it would become extremely challenging and expensive for the future owners to be able to um, manage that through the winter time. So it was their recommendation that we go with impervious and that was how BWSC had reviewed and approved the plans for all of the water runoff um, and sizing. Uh, so I, I guess, Ms. Weevil, I wouldn't say that the, the owners or the, or the contractor are fundamentally opposed to it. It just was specifically not recommended by subject matter experts on, on the topic. So Kate, Katie, that is to answer your kind of concerns. We have in the past put some provisals to use um, porous material. Uh, they are, it is accurate that for snow removals, at times you have to do it by hand. But again, those that are very conscientious of the environment would go to that effort, of that extra effort. Okay, with that, let's open it up to public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office held in the Bunners meeting on March 22nd of 2023. Uh, the applicant then went on to meet with the JPNC, uh, which approved this proposal on April 12th. Our office has received no letters of opposition at this time. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to I have no raised hands. With that, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion um, to approve with the following provisos that the plans undergo. Uh, actually, we're, we already got the feedback from Dom, Bob D'Amico, so I'll just have a motion of approval um, with uh, a proviso of BPDA design review of attention to the site plan to increase open space and reduce impervious surface. Thank you. Uh, may I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Stanbridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewell. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate the board's attention. Mm -hmm. Next, we have case BOA. 1463651, an address on 137 West Newton Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Hi, Joseph, are you on? If so, can you raise your hand for a representative from 137 Newton? 
I know we checked in yesterday in the big oh. oh, the Holland Companies. Is that you? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, hello, um, to Madam Chair and board members. Um, We're a little low. Can you hear me now? A, a little better. Is it? Um, hold on one second. It's not very distant. Hello, board members and Madam Chair. Can you hear me now? Better. How was that? Good, thank you. Okay, I apologize. Um, my, my name is Joe Holland. I'm a partner at Holland Construction. We were this building at 137 um, West Newton Street. Um, this proposal is for a, um, if you could scroll to page two, for a rear deck off street level, um, of this single family townhouse that we rebuilt. And in addition, if you could keep scrolling, there's also a plan for a roof deck that was approved by South End Landmarks. Um, the reason for the the reason for the rejection on the roof deck is because of uh, head houses are um, excluded or prohibited in the South End, so it requires a, a, a hatch. Um, the rear deck is six feet off the building, which is consistent with um, past uh, precedent in the south end. I don't have, I don't really have any, any more to add. I'm open for questions. Yep. Um, right. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, we have public testimony. Hi, yes. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. The applicant had an abutters meeting in May where one abutter attended uh, with no questions or concerns raised. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, And Mr. Hampton, uh, I don't know if you got a recommendation. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. We recommend an approval on this. It's already received Landmark's uh, approval, so we don't need to do any design review if the board sees fit. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Oh. I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Stembridge? Uh, yeah. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Better Braza? Yes. Ms. Wheelow? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, board. Thank you. The next case is BOA 145568. That's a two this way. The applicants and board their representatives present. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Richard Linz of 245 Summer Street, East Boston, an attorney on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, real briefly, um, this board may remember this case. Uh, it was probably the first case, I believe, the board, uh, the new, newly constituted board occurred back in January. Uh, at that time, uh, the board had uh, voted to deny this matter without, with prejud without prejudice. Um, and the comments uh, at the time by Ms. Barraza. Uh, involve the setback of the building. Uh, if we can scroll down to slide two, just to give the board a little reminder of the context of the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, so we're looking here is Coppersmith Way, which is uh, located just outside of Maverick Square in East Boston. Uh, the uh, pictures you see here show the surrounding buildings along Coppersmith Way, uh, all uh, roughly four and five story buildings. Our proposal would be for a four story, three unit building uh, which is actually allowed uh, as a matter of right on this side of Coppersmith uh, oh. in the use. Um, the other side of Coppersmith Way is actually in the waterfront commercial district, which allows greater densities and heights up to 55 feet. Um, if we wanted to scroll down a little bit further to the site plan, I can talk a little bit about some of the changes uh, that we made with respect to the uh, radius perfect. So uh, our, our site is the one sort of located in the middle of the screen there. Um, we originally proposed this, uh, it was pretty similar to the buildings around it where it occupied pretty much the entire, the entire width of the lot, uh, as well as the depth. 
Uh, I believe Ms. Barraza had some concerns about our setback, including the rear. The structure that we do see in the rear of our building um, that, uh, that's outlined here is actually a garage, uh, so it's not a residential building. Uh, I believe the owner of that property is on the call as well and uh, has expressed support for our uh, revised proposal. Uh, with respect to the building itself, we want to scroll back a couple of slides. We can look at the proposed rendering. Uh, uh, one, go one forward, please. Perfect. Uh, so what we see here is the four-story the four -story building with the proposed roof deck. And again, pretty consistent with the surrounding context um, for Copper Smith Way. Uh, and I believe it is also consistent with uh, the efforts for planning spots and for rezoning uh, for this neighborhood with increased heights and densities. Um, the lower two levels at the first and second floor uh, would be studio size units. The first level being uh, handicap adaptable, so persons uh, requiring accessibility would have uh, the ability to purchase that unit. The upper two floors constitute one unit, it's a bi level unit, two bedroom, a little over 1,055 square feet. With respect to the relief that we require, uh, because this isn't a three family uh, zoning district, uh, three units are permitted, so no, no relief necessary for that. Our lot size is uh, just under 1,000 square feet and therefore would require relief for the minimum lot size. Again, this is quite consistent with the adjoining lots along that section of Popper Smith Way and around Liverpool and uh, uh, the other streets, as you can see here from the map. Uh, with respect to the frontage, we do have sufficient frontage and lot width at 27 feet. 20 feet is the uh, requirement. Uh, we have increased our setback, so the minimum setback requirement for the district is two and a half feet in the side yards. We are showing it at 2.75 on the left and a little over 4.2 feet on the right. Uh, the right side of the building allows for the openings uh, under the state building codes. We are able to incorporate some windows, which we weren't able to do before. With respect to the rear yard, because this is a shallow lot condition, Article 53 allows for a reduction of the rear yard requirement that's typical in the 3F2000 district. So in this case, um, the only requirement would be about a 10-foot setback. We're actually uh, at four feet, which is increased from the original proposal. So we do require relief for that, but as I pointed out, the structure directly behind us is a garage, so our proximity to that building uh, shouldn't have much of an impact on that abutting property owner. Our flood air ratio, uh, we were originally at about 3.13. Uh, the changes in the building we made have dropped this down to 2.67. Uh, so we still require a variance for it, but it, again, it's pretty consistent with what we see along Congressman Way in the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, the height of our building is at 43 feet 10 inches. Uh, that's a four story building. 35 feet is the maximum. Uh, but as I mentioned, directly across the street, the zoning district allows for heights up to 55 feet. And I did have a, a photo uh, earlier showing some of the taller buildings in the immediate, in the immediate neighborhood. Uh, with respect to the uh, number of spaces uh, that are required for parking, uh, the zoning code requires that you have one parking space per unit. Uh, the site is uh, pretty tight for parking. Um, we did uh, have conversations about uh, incorporating parking at the lower level. Um, you know, the, the preference to have an adaptable or accessible unit uh, appeared to be uh, much more favorable for surrounding neighbors. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we had stuck with the uh, habitable space at the lower level. Um, we also, I believe this is also a GCOB. I, I know we've provided the appropriate no harm uh, and report from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. Uh, I will pause there uh, to answer any questions about the board. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, no, no question. I just wanted to acknowledge that um, the the setbacks are has improved significantly. Um, when we did not it without prejudice, it was literally landlocked and almost up to the lot line. So this this um, you guys did a really good job with providing some side yard relief. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? With that, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. ONS hosted a butters meeting for this project on March 23rd of 2023. Uh, two of butters joined the meeting with both uh, vocalized support for the project. The applicant then went on to meet the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association in March and July of 2022. Um, sorry, I'm not sure if that's incorrect there, but the association voted in favor of the project. Uh, at this time, our office is unaware of any concerns. Thank you. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, members of the board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Ground Law Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, you're looking to give testimony here, or are you also? Outside of that, I have no additional raised hands. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Sebastian Parra. I'm the East Boston liaison for City Council Gabriel Colea. Based on community support and the support from MCNA, the council will right, support support this project as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you hear? Yeah. Mr. Underwood, are you uh, are you giving testimony on this? I have no additional raised hands. Mr. Underwood, are you here to speak on two copyrights? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Mr. Yes. Underwood, we can hear you. Are you here to give testimony on two copper Smith Way? Yes. Can you can you hear me? We can hear oh, you. Hi, can... hi uh, my name is Michael Underwood. I am an abutter. I live at 78 Liverpool Street. Um, and I I am. I yeah. would like the board to reject it. Okay. You can't hear me. Okay. Thank you. I'd like you to the board to reject this proposal uh, based on the fact that there is no parking. Uh, it's a very tight lane, very densely packed, uh, excessively uh, high building on such a small lot. Uh, the street is lined with trash barrels, uh, limited access for uh, fire access. And I respectfully ask the board to reject this plan as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other raised hands? Jessica? Are you looking to give testimony here? If so, can you state your name and address for the record and briefly tell us if you're in support of opposition? Hi, Sean. Hello. My name is Sean Sartino. I live at 52 Liverpool Street, and I'm in full support of this project. I think the area could use a lot more uh, housing in the area, and it seems like the developer would have his way to kind of accommodate for that. Thank you. Thank you. No additional raised hands. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, yeah. actually, yeah, yes. I, believe, I believe the BPDA on this also had a recommendation. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Hampton's available. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. We recommended approval with design review, uh, neighborhood context. I know it's a lot of uh, newer buildings up in the area, so we would just uh, ask that we do design review on it. Thank you. Sorry, thank Madam you. Um, two additional hands that just popped up. Can I move forward with those? Or? Uh, sure. Okay, thank you. Luke, um, can you state your name and address for the record? Briefly tell us if you're in support of opposition. Uh, Luke Bowen. I'm at 28 Maverick Street, and I am in full support of the project. Thank you. I'm Brian H. Okay. Hi, uh, my name, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes, my name is Brian. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I live right in the area, 30 Maverick Street. My family owns the garage behind it, and I'm in full support of this. Um, Joe's been great. He's reached out to uh, all the surrounding residents, and he's really stayed on top of it and informed us. So nothing's caught us by surprise. And I think um, the added units will definitely help. We need housing in the area mm -hmm. as well. So I think that would be, be very good, and it would be nice to see that lot build it on it. Would be great for the neighborhood. Okay, thank you, Brian. Okay, have no additional raised hands. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve with BPDA design review. Um, I think this project fits in nicely. The overall bulk and massing seems consistent with the neighborhood, and I'm happy to see another unit instead of parking. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Cambridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Ms. Bettabraza. Yes. Ms. Ruo. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes, ma'am. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> At this time, Madam Chair, uh, jump ahead to the 11 o'clock uh, hearing and ask if there are any requests for withdrawal or deferral in the time slot.
right. Hearing none, shall we go back? We will go back uh, to the last couple of pages. 930 to time for it. Uh, this one is case BOA 1463869 with an address of 100 Swift Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Thank you. Raise hands here. Um, Molly or Gail, are either one of you on for this hearing? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um, there is no um, a, a allowance for billboards of, of the uh, site. I don't think she's the applicant. Is the applicant on? Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, okay. Sorry. Mo Molly, are you the applicant? Okay, can you introduce yourself and address and walk us through your proposal? Applicant on behalf of First Priority Credit Union, located at 100 Swift Street, East Boston, Mass, 02128. Um, we are proposing to have, as you can see in the rendering, um, some retail signage um, posted on the corner of Bennington and Swift Street. Um, and look forward to um, your thoughts. So where we see this picture of first priority, that's where you want to put your billboard, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Can, what's your distance from that billboard that's uh, on that uh, highway? Um, what's the distance from the building itself or from? No, from that signage since uh, the outdoor, outdoor advertising board has regulations about distance between billboards. Um, um, may I ask Ms. Miller to speak on that um, question, if you may? I don't think Ms. Miller is a uh, part of your team, are they? Oh, I apologize. I'm so sorry. Uh, Mr. Tevnin? Um, my representative is Mr. Charlie Tevnin. Um, I know that he's on, um, on this call as well. Um, as I do not have the exact dimensions from where that would be located, I apologize. Jessica, is he a panelist or can you make him a panelist? Okay, there we go. Can you answer that question, Mr. Tubman? Are there, well, are there other questions from the board while we wait? I apologize. Um, Madam Chair, good morning, thank you. I, just been elevated uh, to be able to speak. And on behalf of the First Priority Credit Union, I'd just like to cl clarify, this is a modest six foot by eight foot sign uh, at the corner of Bennington Street and Swift Street. And uh, it's, it's not subject to review by the Outdoor Advertising Board. It's, uh, it is forbidden in a neighborhood shopping district but this uh, particular sign uh, would be a positive addition to, to this uh, area, which was improved by the first priority credit union when it was constructed over 10 years ago. We uh, notified all uh, immediate abutters and received um, positive responses, to the credit union, and um, we would ask that the board approve this modest request and i do want to distinguish it it's definitely not uh, subject to any overview by the outdoor advertising board got it so to con sorry it wasn't clear originally so to confirm this isn't a billboard per se this is signage for first priority it's not rotating ads that's correct and it's uh six feet by eight feet an average billboard would be 40 40 feet by 20 feet so this is a very small and modest uh, on-premise sign with the first priority logo. Can, can I ask a further question, Madam yes, Chair? Yes, please. Uh, can you please let us know uh, what is the reasoning for it? Uh, the, the rationale was to uh, increase the visibility for the first priority credit unit on the, on the corner that uh, it could use additional uh, visibility. Okay, and then uh, I would like to hear Jeff Hampton 
in regards to um, in in, ter in terms of reflections in regards uh, to being a, mod a modest modest freestanding on with an existing site. It's a top location. Um, we are on the for it to now without prejudice uh, because if you go by that site right now. There is good. There is good visibility on that corner, um, and we feel that you know not only is it a forbidden use, but that's the location to put it aside. And so we're on record of uh, to now without prejudice. Mr. Hampton, I'm sorry. What I can't, I couldn't quite catch. What's the reasoning for the location being a challenge to you? It's just he said it's, it's on the corner right now. It's like corner traffic visibility. Okay. Uh, it's right there and right now when it's wide open when there's clear there's clear sight okay. with the Bennington and putting a new sign up is going to be that for the site. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Could I respond, Madam Chair? Uh, yes. We did have this uh, reviewed by the BPDA, I was not aware that it was a recommendation for a denial without prejudice, but uh, I, the, my understanding was that the request would have been otherwise granted if it wasn't a, uh, in a forbidden zone. And, it, and, and even though this is a neighborhood shopping district, this is pretty much the only uh, business that, uh, that's, that's nearby, and I, I suspect that the reason for it being forbidden has more to do with the location near um, near a major roadway, elevated roadway, and to dissuade outdoor advertising, off-premise outdoor advertising, vis-a-vis -vis a, a billboard. And this is not a billboard. I think this is a modest request to assist the first priority credit union to uh, serve its members and to expand, and it's a uh, it's a small, relatively small um, credit union, and uh, we ask that the board approve. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Can the applicant confirm how many signs they currently have on their building advertising the name of the business? If you could, I, I do believe the rendering um, on the first page, so the... Uh, there is, there is um, Katie, there is a large sign right at the rear of that corner that's, that says first priority so that Jeff is correct in that their signage is just there is a tree canopy that you know conflicts a little bit um, but they do have adequate signage on that corner at the building yeah I believe they have two signs one on Swift and one on um, I think the I'm not sure what the other street is but I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing any if the ambassador could uh, scroll down again to the last page where the bird's eye view is, uh, the second last, the, the one above, right there, you can see the uh, the expressway that's the, that's there. This is mainly residential in nature, except for the first priority credit, credit unit. And I again, my view is it isn't that. Uh, is that the rationale for this underlying zoning is to discuss for this to be neighborhood shopping. It isn't in the usual sense of a neighborhood shopping district that uh, you would walk in, in, in several schools. It's not a, a village. It's right located next to the, to the expressway. Uh, but there isn't much visibility on the corner of Bennington uh, the, the sign that is facing the facing Cliff Street. And we're seeking to have uh, increased visibility facing Bennington Street. Thank you. Uh, may I take public testimony? 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, we had the applicant uh, flyer butters within 300 feet, um, and our liaison just heard from one resident who called in to express concerns that the sign might lead to crime. Um, other than that, no other concerns were raised uh, with our liaison. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure I see no additional hands raised at the moment. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Sebastian Parra from Cosford Coletta's office. In conversations with Harborview Neighborhood Association, the developer has not gone before their board uh, for um, support and they would like to take a look at the, the proposal before uh, it moves forward with the ZBA. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Gail, Gail, Taylor, um, I'm sorry about Gail. Are you looking to get testimony here? Um, yes, uh, uh, yes. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of one of the proponents, or, or, or at, 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 not a proponent actually, opponent of large billboards. While this is not the same size of a billboard that you would naturally see along the highway, it is quite large and it looks like this, this drawing minimizes the appearance of what it will be. Eight feet is eight feet, it's still quite large, and so is six feet, so six by eight. Uh, on that residential street, um, you're just having a lot of units go up right next to it. Right? I think they're mandated, if I'm not mistaken, to put some commercial application down below. Um, it, it's property there. I think it's six units that are going up, six or nine, I, I forget. Um, but it, it's for, for all intents and purposes, it's a very large book sign that is on that um, throughway. So, and yes, it is very close to the highway. So it's yeah. probably probably under 200, and that it probably isn't subject to the same outdoor advertising board rules. Thank you, Ms. Um, Miller. Tim, no, uh, do you want to address? Yep. Do you want to address any of those issues, Mr. Tubman, before we? Uh, make yes, a uh, please. Uh, with regard to the community process, Madam Chair, uh, we, uh, we absolutely were willing to meet with the Neighborhood Association uh, and we relied um, on Neighborhood Services representative to uh, determine whether we needed to do that or not. And the Neighborhood Services representative uh, determined that given that it was a small, uh, modest request, that just abut uh, through flyer uh, and notify all immediate abutters, uh, several of whom, uh, whom Molly Walk from the uh, from the credit union can attest, came in to the credit union in support of this uh, request. But we certainly would have met with neighbors. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. With that, may I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to deny without prejudice. I don't believe a hardship has been met. They have multiple signs on their property. On the building, there's a directional sign at the entrance to the driveway advertising the name of the business. So I don't believe they need a possible fourth sign. Thank you. May I have a second? second? Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? No. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Is Mr. Langham with us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the chair votes no, but the motion carries. Next case. Thank you. Next case is VOA 1459116. The address being 770 Galvin Boulevard. The applicant and or their representative present. Hi there, Madam Chair, three of the members. Thank you so much for the time today. I'm Jay Yeomans with Bullfinch Strategies Group uh, representing uh, the applicant at 770 Gallivan Boulevard. <clears throat> um, as cannabis uh, use is a forbidden use, 
Uh, we have gone through the Boston Cannabis Board process. Um, we're, we're unanimously approved by the BCB and have entered a host community agreement for the location. Uh, we are now before you seeking um, a use variance um, and I'm joined today um, by Richie Parsons, uh, who's a longtime resident of this neighborhood and who will be uh, both a part owner and retail manager of the proposed application. Um, Jessica, I don't know if it would be possible for me to share just a brief presentation for Richie. No, we just have to, we have to refer to the slides that are on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Richie. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, I'm Richie Parsons. My family's lived in Adams Village in Dorchester since 1916. I'm one of the co-founders, and as Jay said, I'll be the general manager of the proposed 770 Galvin Boulevard. Uh, if we have slides, I guess the next slide. Uh, we are a highly experienced retail team committed to compliance and community. I was a retail manager and district manager for Newbury Comics for 33 years, and I cur currently manage a successful medical marijuana dispensary in Needham for the past five years. One I might add with a perfect compliance record. Michelle Foley, who joins me today as our co-founder and operations manager, Michelle has successfully run multiple well-established and professional cannabis and other retail locations in and around Boston, and also has an impeccable record for safety and compliance. Our team has successfully managed five cannabis retail facilities in Massachusetts with locations in Boston, Cambridge, Needham, Watertown, and Somerville. And Michelle hired me in Needham five years ago. I'm really proud of the dispensary's perfect incident-free track record, our relationship with Needham law enforcement and the community, as well as our setting and maintaining the gold standard of compliance with the CCC. Uh, in fact, the CCC has often used the Needham facility as training for newer inspectors as a model of a tight ship. Uh, next slide, if we're going that way. Uh, just a little bit about me uh, before I introduce you to Michelle. Um, my family lived on Westmoreland Street for 100 years, as I said, 1916 to 2016. My dad worked at the Supreme Market when he was 18 in 1936, and he ran the CCD program at St. Brendan's for 25 years. As a teenager, I was working in Feline's basement, and I wrote a song for my band called No Surfing in Dorchester Bay, which became through, uh, known throughout the neighborhood, and that's where we get our name, Surf's Up Cannabis. Uh, I just want you to understand how much I care about this community uh, and to demonstrate to you the, and the pub public listening in uh, how dedicated our team is to making this location the best retail experience the community could hope for in this neighborhood. We've done the work and the outreach to make this possible. I spent every weekend for months getting into the community, meeting people, knocking on doors, responding to people's questions and concerns. Uh, with that, we've re -support, received support from the Cedar Grove Civic Association with a 61% in favor of the project, a letter of support from District Councilor Frank Baker, and more than 60 residents and neighbors throughout the neighborhood, including one of the site's direct abutters. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Michelle. Thank you, Richie. Um, some highlights of 770 Gallivan Boulevard. Uh, the site is an existing high volume commercially zoned retail location uh, that previously hosted a busy Verizon store as well as a regional uh, COVID-19 testing site. As you can see, the site is adjacent uh, to Neponset Circle with ample access to multimodal uh, public transit options. The site is home uh, to what would represent one of the largest availability of dedicated parking spaces for any cannabis establishment in Boston. The site directly abuts another commercial uh, retail tenant, AutoZone. The site has significant buffering to the surrounding residential area, which cannot be directly accessed off Gallivan Boulevard due to the one-way egress from Clover Street. This means there is no potential for the site to generate vehicular traffic in the residential neighborhood. This proposal meets all siting requirements. 
Um, there is an existing non-retail delivery only marijuana facility at 1170 uh, Morrissey Boulevard, which is approximately three tenths of a mile away. This is important as the general public, regardless of age, is prohibited from entering or otherwise accessing a delivery only facility. It's also noteworthy that Zephyrin was approved for delivery only and pledged to the Boston Cannabis to never pursue a retail license. Finally, 770 Morrissey Boulevard is separated from 770 Galvin by four lanes of uh, traffic, metal barriers, the I-93 overpass, as well as the Ponce Circle. Uh, I don't know if we have an interior um, side of the space, but um, the interior space is designed for maximum efficiency. All product is kept in a secured limited access vault with no product on the sales floor except in locked display cases. Um, the average customer transaction time is about three to five minutes. Uh, we'll be offering order ahead online uh, ordering as well as in-store self-serve kiosk ordering, uh, both which decrease uh, the average transaction time. Our security measures meet or exceed all standards for local banks and financial institutions. This means that this facility will be one of the safest locations in Dorchester. We have extensive standard operating procedures in place around security, preventing diversion, and inventory controls that all of the staff are thoroughly trained on uh, by our general manager, which will be Richie, and by myself. Um, Richie and I run efficient retail stores and we're always implementing new software and new processes to further streamline our operations. And as a result, we're able to process customers quickly and maintain a safe and secure area in and around the dispensary. Um, in addition to our well-trained staff, the facility is monitored 24 seven by cameras and alarms and access to all of our product is tightly controlled. Only certain employees have access to the secured vault uh, where products are stored. It bears repeating that under our management, our stores have had zero incidents for theft, diversion, or public nuisance. We will institute a strict zero tolerance policy. No use of products on the premise or in uh, the direct surrounding neighborhood. No public nuisances. Security uh, will also have sole discretion to refuse access uh, to anyone to the, into the facility. Um, and any person violating these regulations or disrespecting our community will be permanently banned uh, from the facility. And with that, I will turn it back to Richie. Hi, in closing, I'd like to thank you for the privilege of being here today. Uh, this is personal. We take it seriously. And if you give us the chance, we won't let you or my Dorchester community down. Thank you very much for your time. Madam Chair, just to uh, uh, clarify for the members, um, again, there are two, uh, two purposes for which we're before the board today. Again, it's a change of occupancy to a forbidden use, uh, which is cannabis uh, marijuana retailer as well as um, as the zoning code um, treats all cannabis licensees, regardless as to whether it's a retail facility or not, as the same for the half purpose of the half mile buffer. We do have a delivery only um, approved site, again, um, three, three, um, 0.3 miles from this site. But again, just wanna remind the members that, that that delivery only does not allow for any consumer or general public access it's it's merely a warehouse allowing for deliveries to happen um, uh, external to that site so um, uh, while the half mile buffer does apply um, i don't think it applies in the way that perhaps it was uh, thought about when the city council um, approved the half mile buffer so with that I, I will turn it to you madam chair thank you thank you any questions from the board Yes, I have one question. What time will operations, what time will the stores be open? So our store hours would be 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 10 a.m. to 8 on Sunday. Yeah, I would like to ask uh, if you can tell us more about what are the community, community benefits that you are providing to the local community? Yeah, Richie, can you um, speak to that? That was something that we worked very closely uh, with the uh, Cedar Grove Association. Um, uh, we actually went before uh, Cedar Grove Civic Association, um, I believe three times, uh, as well as worked with the leadership team there uh, between meetings. Um, 
in order to make sure that we uh, set up a process that did benefit the community. Specifically, we've committed to um, setting up a community advisory board to actually um, distribute the funds so that we're not actually in the middle of kind of playing favorites, if you will. Um, I think that you see a lot of these um, proposals will come in and, and kind of use the money, if you will, to kind of get the support that they need. And I think we really wanted to come in and, and, and dedicate money to what the community wants rather than what we think the community would want. Um, to that, Richie, can you maybe comment more on just the, uh, the community benefit uh, package? Yeah, um, I apologize. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I believe it's um, 100,000 uh, for the starting after the first year for three years. Uh, and as Jay said, it would be something that the community would decide on, um, you know, where the money goes. Sometimes, uh, you know, charities and such might not want to be directly associated with, a, a, you know, a cannabis uh, company, but um, we would leave that up to them. Yeah, so it's 110000 a year for five years is what we Thank think. you. And do you have any other cannabis locations in Boston or in the Boston area? I'm currently managing one uh, in, in Needham. I've been there for five years. But to answer the question, uh, I think that you're asking, no, the, this manage, this team, uh, Richie and Michelle, this would be their only um, venture for which they would have a controlling interest. Um, they have been associated with other ventures, either as an employee or a minority. Um, uh, partner, but uh, this will be their first time really uh, going out on their own, um, and that's been made possible by their employment at other um, dispensaries over the course of the last seven years. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, so thanks for answering. That was going to be one of my questions in terms of equity partners, um, but you noted that you, there is no equity partner in this pro in this project. Uh, I see a lot of parking spaces. Um, what are you going to do with all of those vacant spots? So right now, um, the uh, uh, owner of the property um, uh, rents, and we anticipate that we would continue to rent 25 spaces to the Naponza Valley Health Center. Um, so currently, employees, like today, employees are using those spaces. Um, uh, to park uh, and then and then access the Naponza um, Valley Health Center, so that would continue. Uh, yeah. we, we expect that that would continue. Um, additionally, we uh, dedicated to working with um, the surrounding neighborhood, uh, particularly the residencies on Minot and Clover, um, to use some of these spots during. Uh, snow emergencies or snowstorms, so there would be some access by immediate abutters uh, for their benefit. Um, you know, I know that um, there continues to be a lot of concern about dedicated parking for these kinds of ventures, and I think that on a positive side, I think that this has more than ample uh, parking. I think it's something to continue to monitor as, you know, candidly, the cannabis industry um, is becoming more saturated, and so we're just not seeing the demand that I think was anticipated at the beginning of this. Um, so I think that will be something that we'll continue to watch carefully um, to make sure that we're not over um, over relying on on on, on parking um, and using that parking uh, for the community benefit. I think where we can. Uh, Mr. D'Amico. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. I just had a question. Uh, are these parking spaces, are they going to be free to the ones that are using it? Meaning uh, to the customers at the store? No, you said there's some of like uh, for the facility, the medical facility, and the uh, community in general. Uh, you're not uh, charging at all. Um, I, I, you know, I, I am not the, I don't represent the landlord directly. I believe that there is an arrangement between the Ponza Valley Health and uh, the landlord um, that probably has some monetary value attached to it. Um, but in terms of the community, direct community of butters and using these spaces during snow or other kind of um, incidences that where that would be a helpful 
uh, benefit that 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 is anticipated as not having any uh, value attached to it other than uh, you know the the value of uh, working well with our our abutters and our in our community. So no money would be attached to that. Okay, uh, if there is any fee involved, uh, Madam Chair, he would need a license from the Boston Transportation Department. But if they're not charging anyone at all, then uh, he's okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Shepard. Uh, my one question I saw on the chat, are there any schools in the proximity of this uh, cannabis shop? Not that uh, trigger any of the uh, restrict uh, any of the buffer restrictions within the zoning code. No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, may we open it to public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office, I like defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some background information on the community process: uh, Office of Neighborhood Services held a butters meeting on. Uh, January 18th of 2023, um, there were several abutters, or residents, I should say, that vocalized uh, their opposition to the proposal, setting concerns uh, with the proposal being across the street from the Pope John Paul Park, as well as concerns that they felt there were already a number of dispensaries in the Dorchester area. Uh, as the applicant mentioned, they met with the Cedar Grove Civic and received their support. And they also were in communication with the Popes Hill uh, Neighborhood Association as well, from what I understand. Um, with that, we'll defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Heather. Hi, uh, I'm Heather higgins Younger. I'm the owner of Top Shelf Cookies. I'm a business in the neighborhood just about a half mile away from the proposed space. Um, I've attended all the community meetings and really gotten to know Richie and Michelle over this time as they've been proposing and bringing their ideas and listening to the neighborhood. And as a business owner in the neighborhood, I feel completely comfortable having them come in. Um, and I also know that they're going to fit in with what the neighborhood wants and needs. So uh, I am in full support. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Um, Stephen. We're looking to give testimony here, Stephen Graham. Sending a request to unmute you. Okay, we have some issues with him jumping on, but I uh, have no additional raised hands if he's all set. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the board? I, I have a question, and yes. um, does the Boston Cannabis Board um, that provides the license? Are they regulating how many they're releasing per neighborhood? So for example, that one neighborhood is not indonated with cannabis retail? Yeah. You have a question directed to? I guess Javier Salas or um, <laughs> can help. Just to, as to if the, the cannabis board is is, any, is anyone regulating how many licenses are being distributed according to the um, the land occupied by each neighborhood? That I'm not 100% sure right now, but I can follow up. Yes, can if you can please follow up or ask BPDA to provide kind of an analysis on that. That would be now that we are on a couple of years yeah. approving them. This would be a really good check in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, is uh, Mr. Graham here to speak on this project or? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Stephen Graham. I live on the Sylvester Road about two blocks away from this site. I've lived here for uh, 37 years and I've lived in Dorchester for almost 70 years. Just to put a little bit into context for the board, 40 years ago, I was president of the Pope's Hill Neighborhood Association, and we would be in front of the board fighting beer and wine liquor licenses for Dorchester area. 40 years later, that seems pretty silly. This, this, uh, we know Richie and we know this site. This site has been vacant now for many years, and that's a terrible, terrible thing for the neighborhood. And we believe this business not only would be acceptable, it would probably be the safest neighborhood business 
in the area. Uh, I personally strongly hope that this board approves this license. Thank you very much. Thank you. No additional raised hands. Thank you. Uh, any any final comments or questions from the board? Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion for approval with the PDA design review. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? No. The chair votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you. Thank you. Before we continue, before we, before we head into the 11 a.m. hearing, I'll make a request for any withdrawals or deferrals from the 11.30 for the rediscussions scheduled for 11.30 a.m. Hearing none, then going on, going to- uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stembridge, my, my apologies. Did you ask for 11.30 as well? I, sorry, it was- uh, For 11.30 11.30 withdrawals no. or deferrals, uh, yes. Yes, my, my apologies. So 58 Murdoch Street, please. Um, Bill, what's the name? Okay. Are you requesting a deferral or a withdrawal? A withdrawal, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So that would be for case BOA 1330427 with the address of 58 Murdoch Street? Correct. Uh, to be withdrawn from today's hearing? That's correct. Okay, anything you want to add, Mr. Drago? So yeah, again, uh, just to go on the record, uh, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with uh, business address of 11 Beacon Street. Um, we, we are asking to withdraw the case at 58 Murdoch Street so we can file uh, a new case under two addresses. We had to make extensive changes uh, during community process. So we will be back with a different case. Thank you, Mr. Drago. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the withdrawal. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Board. With that, we will now return to and start with the 11 a.m. hearing. First case is BOA 1174452, with the address of 1552 Wenham Street. Is the applicant and or is your representative present? Oh, Mark, go ahead. Is that you? You can unmute yourself. Hi, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Mark Tettenhofer. I'm the homeowner at 5052 Wenham Street, and I'm seeking relief from uh, violation Article 55, Section 12, Side Yard Mission. Hey, can you just, uh, what, are, what are you proposing? Uh, the actual proposal is to um, the current porch is in desperate need of repair. And so the idea was to remove it and rebuild it in the same footprint, but as an enclosed porch. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, we have public testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. 
our office uh, facilitated a butters meeting on June 14th. Um, we ended up receiving four letters of support from abutters, and the applicant went on to meet with the JPNC Zoning Committee, which I understand voted to support this proposal. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? See, I have no additional raised hands. The raised hand is uh, the applicant. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second? Second. Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Pedabraza? Yes. Ms. Wuo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you, everyone. Next, we have case BOA. 1464287, the address being 13 Norwood Avenue. And this is also a BPDA Article 8, this is a BPDA Article 80 case. Is the applicants and or their representative present? Yes, Mr. Stembridge, thank you. Good uh, morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I represent City Realty Group, uh, the owner and developer of the property. Josh Fetterman from City Realty is here, as is uh, Dan Artigas from Embark Design, the project architect. The proposed project consists of a new five-story building to contain 52 residential apartment units, including nine affordable units in accordance with the city's inclusionary development policy, which is just over 17% affordability. 50 garage parking spaces will be provided, as well as ample bicycle storage space. As Mr. Stembridge indicated, this is an Article 80 small project, which was approved by the BPDA on March 16th of this year, after uh, an eight-month public review process. The 13 Norwood Street site is approximately 18,409 square feet, and is within a CC Community Commercial Zoning Subdistrict situated on a block that lies between Morrissey Boulevard uh, due westerly and the MBTA's red line right of way due easterly. The lot is currently used for outdoor storage of rental vehicles. This stretch of Norwood Street is characterized by uh, multiple uses and, and building typologies, including commercial storage facilities, construction support services, surface parking and storage, as well as multiple scales of uh, residential buildings and retail operations. Most recently, uh, with respect to this board, several multifamily developments have been approved on both Norwood Street and Tolman Streets, providing contextual and massing influences for the proposed project. The program of this building locates the lobby uh, and additional amenity spaces, including bike storage on the ground floor along Norwood Street, facilitate and activate the streetscape. Parking uh, has been located to the rear of the site away from the street so as not to impact the public realm. The site is located within a coastal flood resilience overlay district and accordingly the building's ground floor has been raised almost five feet from existing grade and meet resiliency requirements. A comprehensive landscape plan has been developed for the project to navigate this grade change including uh, new street plantings and sidewalks along Norwood Street. As I mentioned, the project will include 50 on-site garage parking spaces accessed via a garage entrance on Norwood Street. The replacement of the current commercial use and its associated vehicular traffic will allow for the closure of approximately 34 feet of existing curb cut on Norwood Street, making for a better and safer pedestrian environment and also reducing the opportunity for vehicular pedestrian conflicts. The 52 residential apartments are to be located on the second through fifth floors, uh, as well as additional amenity space, including a fitness room, a common room, and roof deck facing the Neponset River and Boston Harbor to the northeast. In addition to the common roof deck, most of the units have been designed to have private outdoor space on inset exterior balconies. Of the 52 units, there will be 23 studio units averaging 580 square feet, 
15 one-bedroom units averaging 775 square feet and 14 two-bedroom units averaging 905 square feet. With respect to the zoning violation, the project has been cited for insufficient off-street parking and loading. We are at a nearly one-to-one -one parking ratio, whereas over 70 spaces would be required by zoning. The BBDA has determined that the amount of provided parking is appropriate and that a dedicated loading dock for this entirely residential building is not necessary. The garage will employ an automated parking system which creates a cited violation for parking size and maneuverability as all such systems do. The proposed floor area ratio of 2.63 exceeds the maximum of two for this zoning subdistrict and the building height, which is just over 60 feet, exceeds the subdistrict maximum of 45 feet. Again, the BPDA has determined that the project's density and height are appropriate for the site in light of the need to create new housing. There is a rear setback insufficiency, but I point out again that the site backs up to the MBTA's red line right of way and track bed. Uh, in light of this fact, uh, various sound dampening construction techniques and methodologies will be employed, um, including possibly the use of meta materials and resilient channels. Also, the residential use of the building begins, as I noted earlier, on the second floor, providing even uh, more distance from the rail bed. The multifamily residential use is conditional in this community commercial subdistrict, but again, as I pointed out earlier, there's significant residential presence in the immediate area, including all properties located directly across Norwood Street from the site. Finally, the project is cited on the zoning refusal letter for being located within both the flood hazard district and sea fraud uh, and fully complies with all flood proofing and resiliency requirements, uh, which was of course a requirement of the Article 80 review and approval process. With that, I'll pause and take any questions that members may have. Thank you, Mr. Marinci. Um, is there someone from BPDA who would like to uh, weigh in, project manager? Or Mr. Hampton? Hearing none, any questions from uh, Mayor, you? If you'd like, Madam Chair, uh, the BPDA ordered this on March 16th, uh, and it went to the Adam Lady approval, and uh, from a very basic point of view, we are on the record in support and just require our ongoing design. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, I would just like confirmation that um, it is indeed a accessible ramp right in front of Norwich Street leading to the main entry. I, I believe that's what it is, but it's it's not noticed. I'm just want confirmation. Uh, yes, uh, you referred to the, the, the residential entry, Ms. Barraza? Correct. There's, it seems like there's a ramp hidden behind a retaining wall, and I just want to make sure that I'm reading that correct, that your front Certainly. end is accessible through a ramp. Yes. Uh, okay. I, well, I, 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 I'm not an architect, obviously. Uh, my, my knowledge is that, of course, we cannot have a non-compliant means of access. The reason for the ramp uh, is, of course, the fact that the, uh, uh, the building is built up five feet uh, in terms of its foundation in order to provide compliance with sea fraud requirements. Um, as I say, DNRT just is here from Embark. If you would like any specific uh, confirmation, for example, on, on, the, uh, uh, on the, uh, the, the degree of, of, of slope on the uh, island is compliance. No, I don't need that. I think, I think that's what it is. I just, it wasn't noted. I just wanted confirmation, but I believe it is an accessible ramp. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, two, three questions. One question is, did I miss the breakdown for the applicant of the units? Was that stated or? Uh, uh, unit count, yes, I can go over that again, or the breakdown of the units. So of the 52, there will be 23 studio units that they're averaging 580 square feet. Uh, as the board knows, a metro unit size for one bedroom is 625, so by studio standards, these are quite large. 15 would be one bedroom units, averaging 775 square feet, and 14 would be two bedroom units, averaging 905 square feet. Of the nine IDP units, uh, 
as a rental project, these would all be at 70% AMI, and there are two two bedroom units, four one bedroom units, and three studio units. Thank, thank you, Greg. And uh, my next question, two part question, is: uh, Have you selected a general contractor for this project, and what's your duration of time for construction for the project? Uh, to my knowledge, no general contractor has been selected. I don't represent City Realty transactionally or in a general sense, but I'm unaware of any general contractor having been selected. Construction cycle, my clients are hoping for a third quarter start, so sometime in the fall this year, uh, and anticipated uh, construction uh, timing would be approximately five or six quarters. They would be looking to finish up uh, hopefully before mid-year 2025. Thank you very much. Any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, yes. Uh, one, yes qu one question and possible comment. Uh, first, uh, the number of, I believe it was stated, the number of uh, IDP units and what the um, AMI would be applied to them? Certainly. So uh, as rental units, these would all be 70% AMI, which is standard. Uh, there are nine identified IDP units. Uh, and what that comes out to is 17 percent affordability for the project thank you um and secondly uh, if mr d'amico is still with us i see he had some comments on um on on the proposal uh, yes uh madam chair uh, members of the board bob d'amico btd um i was just wondering um i don't see the amount of spaces numbered in the stackers uh, I know there's a total number, but um, I don't know if there's going to be two or three. In other words, I'd like more detail on the, um, the setup of the uh, stack or parking to make sure that it would work well. Thank Hi, you. Uh, Mr. D'Amico, George Bracey. The uh, page 20 of the plans presentation, which is the ground floor plan, uh, shows uh, detailed information on the uh on the garage and the parking system so there are four automated uh, stackers uh of 14 10 10 and 14 spaces uh that is a total of 48 and the additional two spaces are hp spaces which are in the front of the building uh adjacent to the bike room they're not shown on this particular page but there is a, a ground floor page plan uh, which again, I believe might be page 20 of the plan set, but it is a full color uh, plan and it comes uh, just after the landscaping presentation. Uh, well, uh, it's Mr. Moranti, okay. Of this presentation. And um, to answer your question of, uh, this is Dan Artegis uh, with Embark, the architect. Um, sorry, I was just raised a panelist, but um the stackers the semi-automated parking the way they work is it will be a two-level system and uh, a tandem configuration uh, so we have four separate systems um they uh, each as george had mentioned a 14 10 10 and 14 so they would operate independently of each other um, but provide parking for those designated totals um, to help with queuing and access. And again, um, the parking level is raised uh, to meet the resiliency guidelines and there will not be a pit. Uh, so these will be two levels above grade uh, for the parking. So well, there's no need for uh, a vehicle to be moved uh, for uh, drivers to get out. They're all independently uh, uh, allowed to um, gain access and egress to the uh, driveway is that what you're saying yes this is a, a fully uh, personalized system so uh, if you had a space you're not responsible for moving another vehicle uh, the system will do that for you uh, and it's all automated within the system okay thank you thank you i'm sure a question i have actually two questions the first yes, one sir. the first one is the nine idp units are over for 70 percent ami so what is the reason or what are the reasons that city reality is not providing idp units for lower incomes for let's say 30 percent 50 percent or 60 percent ami and the second one second question is if you can tell us very quickly if there are other community benefits 
that the project is uh, allocated to the local community. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, the, uh, the, the IDP uh, package was determined in conjunction with the Affordable Housing Division at the BPDA. 70% uh, is standard. I understand the thrust of the question, which is that you feel maybe uh, that percentage uh, should be different, uh, but it is in fact what we did work out with uh, the Affordable Housing Division at the BBDA. Uh, in terms of community benefits, uh, there will be um, typical contributions such as to the Blue, Blue Bikes program. Uh, there will be approximately $55,000, uh, which would uh, be earmarked for sidewalk, street, and or public realm improvements in the area. Uh, there is going to be a $10,000 donation to the Gavin Foundation, which would be uh, directed for uh, Eileen's House, which is a residential treatment facility for women um, who are in recovery in the Dorchester neighborhood. Um, my clients are also contributing uh, $25,000 to another uh, Dorchester nonprofit. Uh, also, uh, an amount of $30,700, which will be paid to the city's fund parks. Uh, and that will be uh, used to fund efforts to maintain green space at uh, Garvey Playground, which is uh, in the area of the proposed project. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, can we have public testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Ross Cochran with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant has completed their community process, namely through the BPDA, given that this project was an Article 80 project. As such, our office was not required in hosting a voters meeting over the project, but I know there were numerous community meetings held through the BPDA. I also know there was some concern brought up over ensuring this project and land were resilient and ensuring that this project continues that resiliency. There is no letter of support or opposition from local civic groups to my knowledge regarding the project. So at this time, our office would like to defer to the, book, to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm the PM for the project from the BPDA, and I will verify um, everything that the um, proponent representative, George Morancy, has stated as far as the process, community benefits, and uh, thought process with the um, built of this building. Great. Anything else you want to add? No, that's it, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Okay. Jessica? Yeah, um, yep. Um, minor, and then Andrew. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of hundreds of our Boston residents, I want to go on record and support the project. Andrew? Hi, uh, yeah. Andrew Alrich, uh, 385 Naponset Ave, um, lifelong resident, small business owner in the area. Um, we we want to uh, support the project. We think it's a good project. We like the recovery aspect of it. Um, and we think it's good for the neighborhood. So we are in support. Thank you. Tommy? Just uh, want to go and support. Can you give me name and address? Oh, um, I'm at uh, 88 Myrtle Bank Ave. Also have property on West Mullen Street in Dorchester. And uh, property on Ponson Ave. Uh, just want to go on record of supporting the project. Thanks. I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'll put forward a motion of approval with the BPDA recommendations on the memorandum that includes nine IDP affordable units and the proposed community benefits. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barbaza? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 136, 3694, the address of 1246 Dorchester Avenue. Is the applicant and or their representative present? We have a raised hand here. Hillary, um, I'm going to make you a panelist. Once you become a panelist, can you unmute yourself? 
Please please tell us what you're looking to do. We're on mute. Hello, this is, um, actually I know it says Hillary Shepard, but this is Owen Thomas. Um, I'm the architect uh, for the project and representing the owners. Um, uh, we are proposing, this is a, a, a small rear addition that we're proposing to the gas station at the Five Corners Mini Mart. Um, you can see the, the photos there on the bottom of the first page show the gas station. Um, the middle photo shows the rear area that we're looking, we're proposing to do a single story addition. And then the aerial view shows uh, where it is. It's a, um, it's a very unique, um, odd shaped lot. Uh, the relief that we're looking for um, is a, of rear yard setback. Um, it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's kind of a funny lot and we were, it's a zero side yard setback and a 20 foot rear yard setback. But, um, uh, it's a it's a kind of a, a unique situation here but uh, what we're proposing is a single story addition to the retail space um, it would be the same height as the existing single story structure um, and just expand the retail space um, for more um, amenities of, of things like that um, and and then that's that's pretty much it the the site is surrounded by uh, industrial kind of parking areas and and obviously that uh, intersection um, towards the front of the gas station. Um, happy to answer any, any questions you might have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, can we take public testimony? Good, oh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kevin Train here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We met, we met with the uh, applicant on September 19, 2022. We received no concerns from the butters and the applicant also met with Meeting House Hill Civic Association and they would like to support this project. At this point, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Okay, with well, that, may I have a motion? I'm sure I make a motion for approval with the PDA design review. Ma'am, a second. Second. Mr. Stafford? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Barbarazzo? Yes. Ms. Wewell? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, we have case VOA 1452479, the address being 122 Thompson Square. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Uh, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini, um, on behalf of the applicant with me. Uh, is Gerald Sullivan, who is the team architect um, to walk to the plans. So this is an Article 80 project. It went through a one to two Thompson Square in Charlestown. The zoning here is neighborhood shopping. Um, this project, project is to change occupancy and construct a five-story addition to an existing building at one to two Thompson Square in Charlestown. The existing building is 26,973 square feet. The addition will be 23,934. It'll have nine residential units, retail space, off-street parking, and the proposal went to a very long and detailed design with BPDA landmarks, as well as the Charlestown Preservation Society. The unit mix will be three, three bedrooms, 2,074 square feet on average, six, two bedrooms, 1,164 square feet on average. Zoning violations, we have off-street parking, which is inaccurate, we satisfy that. Building heights, 35, we brought the building to match the existing building that's currently there, which is 67. Uh, side yard setback is two and a half, and on one section on a very corner, we're at zero. Uh, roof structure restriction because of uh, doing the uh, work to the roof. And I stated this went to a, <clears throat> it's a historic nature of this building, so it was vetted extensively by BPDA landmarks, architects, as well as uh, Chalstown Preservation. We had five, over five meetings with Chalstown Preservation, and the project evolved due to their input. 
Um, and we have agreed with Charlestown Preservation for a proviso that any uh, work would not in any way uh, demolish the existing mansard roof, which we would request be a proviso uh, this morning. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our architect, Gerald Sullivan, uh, to walk you guys through the designs, and we're here to answer any questions, but we appreciate the opportunity to present this morning. Is uh, Gerald Sullivan, I know he's on the call. You may have to be unmuted. But Jared Sullivan, he's... Let's see him raise his hand, be helpful. Um, Jessica, I see Erin uh, Stibbins from BPDA. And maybe she can speak while you're also looking for this other person. Okay. Um, sure. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Erin Skibbins, and I'm a project assistant at the BPDA. The 1 2 Thompson Square project went through a thorough Article 80 small project review in 2021, which included input from other city agencies, including Boston Landmarks Commission staff. A public meeting was held virtually on March 31st, 2021, which was advertised in the local newspaper and online, and the project was approved by our board in June of 2021. The proponents have acknowledged that design review will continue upon CBA approval of the project. The project has the agency's full support to move forward. Thank you. That says B, I just made you, sent a request to make you a panelist in a new DGO, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so th thank you for meeting me there. Uh, so the, the, the intent of this project was to recognize the significance of this historic building and to uh, put the addition as far as possible away from the building so that uh, we are, do not infringe on any of the historic uh, nature of the building. Uh, as John mentioned earlier, we will, you know, uh, accept the, 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 the requirement to make sure that we do not disturb or demolish any of the uh, existing mansard roof uh, on the building. Um, we are setting the building back. Uh, if you go to the other drawings there, you, you'll see that the building is set back uh, to provide a little courtyard there uh, outside of the Starbucks, which will be a, a um, public space in which people can, um, you know, I, I can both I go to the Starbucks as well as the, uh, the new building, which will have retail on the first floor. And we're also um, working with uh, the BPDA, MBTA, and Public Works on uh, design and improvements of the public realm near the project site, which includes relocation of an MBTA bus 92 stop from the south side of Church Street to the front of 122 Thompson Square including the installation of a four to five foot extension sidewalk, reinstating granite curbs in every uh, four updated ADA compliant, and also pedestrian access improvements, including landscape and other streetscape improvements in and around the project site. Um, so we've, as uh, Jerry stated, gone through a long process. We've worked extensively with the community. We've worked extensively with the BPDA design uh, and indirectly and directly through uh, the Landmarks Commission. But Jeannie, can, can you just address, has this been through Land, Landmarks Commission? Have they approved it? What's, what's the status? So, that's a great question, Madam Chair. So uh, the, we had a meeting early on with the Landmarks Commission just to have them vet the project. And through the BPDA design review, Landmarks and BPDA work hand in hand on designing this. So this has been reviewed by the Land, uh, Landmark architects. Uh, the process is after today's uh, Zoning Board of Appeal meeting, if this is approved, we go back to landmarks to have them uh, look at the design and make any changes that they feel are appropriate. The concern in the community was with respect to pre preserving the mansard roof of the existing building. And uh, we worked again since even last night into this morning, um, reaching agreement with the Chalestown Preservation Society as well as with the district councilor on the preservation of that. So. Um, okay. Well, that would be useful to hear during public testimony because we do yes. have there are quite a number of. Uh, uh, letters in opposition and they reference these things. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? 
I have a question, Madam Chair, um, for the applicant. Is this, you know, project, I guess, under common ownership with the historic building? Are they sort of taken together? Or are they separate? Um, can you speak to that? Yeah, so they would be under common ownership. That's a good question. Initially, when this came before uh, years back, uh, that building, uh, when you're looking at this building to the left, is uh, was not owned by uh, this proponent. However, that has changed and that it will be in common ownership. And so a lot of the things up top are life safety issues and things like that that were um, done as part of the uh, architectural presentation this morning. Okay, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Other questions from the board? Okay, with that, let's have public testimony. Uh, Jim, members of the board, Sean Green uh, with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. So some background was already touched on, but they, uh, there was an initial public meeting that was hosted by the BPDA in late March of 2021. They received BPDA approval. Um, <clears throat> it first went before this DBA in June of 2021, where it was denied. Since then, uh, the proponents have worked with the Charleston Preservation Society and the BPDA on the proposal. The Preservation Society since I last spoke to them this morning, still objects to the variance stock or on the maximum building height allowed. Um, but as we're made aware of the project once more via flyer this April, April 2023, this office has received no letters in support and has re received eight, sorry, nine in opposition, including one from the CPS based on the maximum height variance. Um, it is with that that we defer our judgment to the board. But I think that has changed, Madam Chair. So they can address that. If they're on, sure. Yes, hopefully. Mr. Parra? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Parra with Councillor Coletta. Uh, Councillor Coletta was able to speak with Amanda from Charleston Preservation Society and with the attorney for this proposal. And they came to an agreement in which the developer will revise the plan so no parts of the men's rent roof line will be demolished. This is a win for preservation and council would like to go in support of this project with this proviso. Thank you. Minor. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my number is for the Carpenter Senior. We'd like to go on record and support of this project. Thank you. Mark, since I request to unmute you, go ahead. Uh, good morning, or good afternoon, really. Um, my name is Mark Spavar and I live at 14 Quarter Street, directly abutting the lot at the rear of 12 Thompson Square. <laughs> Um, well, while I support the redevelopment of the lot in general, I object to the height of the proposed addition, which would nearly double the permitted height in the neighborhood. The new 68 foot building would loom over my neighbor's homes, blocking light and views. It's disappointing that the applicant has apparently not made any changes to the plans that were previously opposed by abutters and denied by the ZBA in 2021, or if they have, those changes haven't been shared with the community. And uh, apparently the Landmarks Commission hasn't approved the design yet, although I understand uh, based on discussions this morning that there's still ongoing discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, are there other raised hands? Sorry, my screen froze. Um, to give her, Gail, did you, were you looking to give testimony here? Are you going to unmute you? Make sure. Confirm. Gail, are you looking to give testimony or are you all set? I saw you. Okay. Is, is that Gail Miller? No, I'm not. Yeah, okay. Yep. I have no additional raise hands. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, uh, may I have any other comments from the board or the applicant before we take a vote? I will just say one thing with respect to the um, abutters on the side street. We had done shadow studies and showed them. They have, if you look, guys look at your tablets, they have extensive tree canopies that would prevent any sun in, um, from our building blocking any sun that goes in there that otherwise wouldn't be blocked from the trees themselves. Thank you. And um, sorry, just really quick from uh, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. <laughs> Uh, Amanda Zettel from the Charleston Preservation Society did just let me know that they would withdraw opposition if the design proviso states that no portion of the man to roof line will be demolished, which I believe was touched on earlier. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the plans be submitted to the Landmarks Commission for design review and for the preservation of the Mansart roof. 
Thank you. With that, uh, may I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Metabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Last case before break. Then I will get to case BOA 144-9324, address of 203 Lexington Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Sorry, I see it's raised to Travis. Are you here to speak on this proposal? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're a little low. Can you speak up? Just uh, to the mic. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, hello, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Travis Marks, and um, along with my wife, Flora Uzan, who's on the call, we are homeowners at 203 Lexington Street, East Boston. Um, we are looking to currently replace a window with a door as of, <clears throat> excuse me, as of right now, we would like this door to provide a means of egress to our third floor unit. There's currently a window that leads to an existing deck and we wish to replace this with the door. Um, we purchased this property about 16 months ago as is, and there was an existing um, kitchen, bathroom, and bedrooms, uh, and was being used as a three-family property. Um, we would like to officially change that uh, occupancy to a three-family dwelling with the addition of this um, egress. Um, I had updated some of the rendering presentation, but it doesn't seem to be showing up here. Um, what we were showing was for the zoning, we are in a three-family area. Um, and all of our neighbors next to us are also three family dwellings. Some of them actually have less square footage than us. Our property exists at 2,500 square feet, whereas our neighbors who are three families are about 2,000 square feet. I know this was a concern. Um, also, we have a plot plan amongst the material here that shows um, that a third of our property is reserved for yard and garden space. I hope this addresses some of the green space concerns. Um, in addition to the concerns about the parking, um, we unfortunately cannot add parking, but don't believe that there will be an impact here to the local area as, again, this was previously used as a three-family property before we purchased it, and we're not adding any additional livable space or, or bedrooms. Um, or more people who would be driving. As my wife and I owner occupy this property, we hope to um, fully, fully move into this uh, unit on the third floor, uh, pending the approval of this. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, can I take public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this project on April 18th, 2023. Uh, no abutters attended and we're unaware of any concerns at this time. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands, Jessica? No, no other raised hands. Thank you. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? I'm going to make a motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Ms. Wewo? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Can we take a 15 minute break? Yes, thank you. Thank you. 